Hi everyone, it's Jessica and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be doing a walkthrough of my latest hydroponic designs and all the different systems within it. The bottom and middle row are both based on NFT or nutrient film technique designs. It might be hard to see on video, but each of these channels consists of a bottom growing channel, a top cover, and two end caps. Each channel has multiple 1 inch square holes that are already pre-drilled into the top covers, which allows for the use of either 1 inch rockwool cubes or oasis hoarder cubes with seedlings to fit perfectly inside. In order to allow the nutrient solution to flow through, each NFT channel is tilted around 2 degrees. I did this by simply adding a small PVC pipe underneath the left side. This delivers a thin film of nutrients and water to the plants without completely submerging their roots in water. Because of the ease to operate, grow, and clean, and because these channels are commercially available, they are widely used by professional growers. Two more things to note about this particular NFT design. First, channel height is somewhat limited, which makes it much more suitable for plants with narrow roots. Second, these channels are manufactured by a company called Crop King. They use food grade materials, which is really important safety and health wise. Their material cost is also reasonable, although shipping costs can be high depending on delivery location and lengths of the channels. Moving on to the top row. In an aeroponic system, the plants and roots are suspended in air. The reservoir has misters, which spray a fine spray over the plant roots. Here are the nozzles, which are connected through quick connect adapters. In order to create a fine mist, the opening of these nozzles need to be tiny, and thus the system usually requires an external water pressure pump. Now I'm going to turn on the pump so you can see how fine the mist is. Hopefully you can see this on video, but it's a very fine mist where water and oxygen are mixed nicely together. Because this requires high water pressure to achieve this, a normal water pump would not be able to deliver. This design is different from most aeroponic systems on YouTube, which are based on low pressure design using these nozzles. Since the opening of this type of nozzle is relatively large, it creates more of a spray than an actual mist, which results in larger water droplets that carry less oxygen. But, if you wanted to use low pressure designs, a regular water pump would be sufficient. While this system can run non-stop, it can also run in cycles using a timer, which is what I have it set on. Although this type of high pressure aeroponic system is the most high tech, and a bit more expensive than other systems, it's also one of the most effective. The system in the middle here is an example of an ebb and flow system. It is also called a flood and drain system, since it floods the plants with nutrients on a cycle. Through this, the plant's roots are not continuously exposed to the nutrient solution, giving them time to breathe. In this specific system, I'm utilizing a bell siphon to provide draining. To increase the cycle time, a very small drain tube is used. This also helps with the start of the bell siphon. The orange piece here is the bell siphon cap. The bottom has been cut to allow oxygen returning back. With this design, the total cycle time is about 40 minutes. If you want to learn more about bell siphons and how they work, you can check out my previous bell siphon troubleshooting and advice video, where I go much more in depth into the topic. The last system in this row is a DWC, or Deep Water Culture System. This type of hydroponic system consists of a reservoir filled with nutrient water solution. The plants are suspended over this reservoir using a net pot and growing media, while the roots themselves are submerged in the reservoir, so they have a constant supply of water and nutrients. Because plant roots can drown if they are not exposed to enough oxygen, I also need an air pump for this system. 
There are a total of four air stones connected to this pump to create the air bubbles in order to continuously oxygenate the water for the plants. In my previous video, I talked more about the importance of aeration in a hydroponic system. I'll also link it above in the cards if you're interested. With that being all the different types of hydroponic systems I have, we can move down to the nutrient reservoir, which is the tank of water down here. I have removed the lid so we can see it more clearly. It is equipped with an 800 gallons per hour submersible pump. One important thing to check is that your pump has enough power to lift water all the way up to the upper channels in this vertical garden design. This particular model has a lift height of about 10 feet, which is sufficient for my case. Also, to make sure large debris won't get into the water pump and into the whole nutrient distribution system, I made a box using this plastic container and surrounded the pump with a sponge for additional filtering. On this side, there's also an air pump and air stones, which are being used to increase water oxygen levels. The water in this tank is pumped all throughout the system through here. You can see how the water flows to each row here on the side. Nutrient distribution system starts here with the main water valve that controls the amount of water flowing throughout the whole system. Each row, however, also has their own separate water valves for more control. As you can see, the bottom two shells each have one water valve that controls the water flow for the entire row, making it so that each channel in that row is receiving the same amount of water. The top row, however, is slightly different, since each of the three channels here has its own smaller water valve to find control the flow. This is especially crucial for the middle one, that uses a bell siphon since it requires a certain range of water flow in order to function properly. Also on the top shelf, there's a water pressure diaphragm that is needed for this aeroponic system, as I mentioned earlier. It's placed after this water pump strainer filter. This strainer filter provides additional filtering to reduce the chance of misters being clogged by dirt and small particles. This is really helpful because it not only prevents dirt from traveling further into the system, but it's also very easy to clean since the container and screen can be easily twisted off for washing. A separate water pump is added in this particular aeroponics design to create a thin layer of water in the case of pump failure so that the plants won't die. Moving on to the right side, this is where the nutrient return path is located. This is where the nutrient water solution returns back down to the reservoir tanks at the bottom, creating a closed system where the water is recirculated throughout this entire hydroponics setup and used over and over again in order to save water. For the NFT channels, the end cap is simply first connected to the PVC adapters and then to the return channel itself. This is different from the top shelf design because for these channels, being able to adjust the water level inside these three systems is actually very beneficial and important. So, instead of having the channels being hard connected to adapters like the rows below, there are holes here so that I can easily adjust the height of the pipe pieces inside the channels. This allows me to control the water height inside the channel pipes and is super helpful when growing plants from seedlings, since seedlings will have shorter roots and will therefore need higher water levels. Then, as they grow and the roots get longer, I can lower the pipe, and by doing so, lower the water level, which will give the roots of the plants oxygen and prevent them from being totally submerged in water 24-7. As the water continues to flow down the return pipe back into the bottom tank, it will pass through a cloth mesh, which will capture any large debris such as plant leaves and roots. The two water reservoirs here are connected through two sets of 1 inch PVC pipes. Those pipes are connected by unions so that I can easily connect and separate them when needed. 
Inside both the tanks, each end of the pipe is connected to a 90 degree elbow. The 90 degree elbows serve two purposes. During normal operation, the openings of the elbows are facing up slightly to avoid picking up any dirt or debris that settles at the bottom of the tank. But when I'm cleaning or draining these reservoirs, I will twist all four of the 90 degree elbows facing down. This action activates a siphon, so that when water is draining out from the return reservoir through this outlet, the water in the main reservoir will also be sucked out to the return reservoir through those 1 inch pipes and then disposed of. As you have probably already noticed, each row is also equipped with small fans and LED lights. The fans help improve air circulation and lower the temperature, which is especially important right now during the summertime, while the LED lights act as sunlight for the plants. The lights run on a timer, which will show in a bit, and each row has two of these 42 watt lights. To prevent the light from spreading out, people often use reflective film, foil sheets, or even really expensive reflective grow tents. In my case, I'm just using a couple pieces of windshield sunshades I got off of eBay, each of which cost less than $2. Lights are always really important for plant growth, but you should also be aware of the light requirements of your plants. For instance, when plants are small like seedlings, they don't require lots of light. Too much light could actually burn them and turn the leaves yellow, which is something I learned early on. The best way to manage this is to know how much light your plants should have and have your lights on a timer that corresponds with that. This is the electrical system my entire system uses. Some of these wires, like the ones for the water pump and air pump, are on at all times, while others are set on a timer. For example, the pressure pump from my aeroponic system is set on a repeat cycle timer and currently runs 4 minutes on and 26 minutes off. The LED grow lights are also on a timer that currently runs from 6am to 7pm. Since plants require not only water and sunlight, but also nutrients in order to survive, I need to make a nutrient solution for my hydroponic system. I create the nutrient water in buckets and dump them into the reservoirs in my system. The first thing I do whenever making this solution is to fill a bucket with water. Because there can be chemicals, metals, and other unwanted particles in the water, reverse osmosis filters are typically used in commercial setups. In order to save costs, I use a shower filter to remove any harmful chemicals and dirt. For the nutrient solution itself that I add in, this is the brand that I use. I mix in this solution and then measure the pH using a pH meter. If the pH levels are too high, which it usually is, I adjust the pH levels to what is recommended for the plants I'm growing using a pH up and down solution. Once this is done, I can then pour the nutrient solution into my system or put it aside for future use. That's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. Because I made so many different hydroponic systems in this setup, I'll definitely be making a future video where I compare the pros and cons of each of them. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to see more content like this from me in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!